My name is Daniel Westreich. Uh, I joined uh, the Duke Global Health Institute October of 2010, just a couple months ago. Um, I'm also faculty in obstetrics and gynecology here at Duke. I have both substantive and methodological research interests. Substantively, I focus on the intersection of maternal health and infectious diseases, especially maternal health and HIV in South Africa. And, and I'm currently funded by uh, NICHD to examine the effect of pregnancy on response to antiretroviral therapy among HIV positive women in South Africa. Uh, and then methodologically, I think a lot about uh, observational data and longitudinal data, so long-term HIV cohorts, for example and what the best statistical methods are for determining cause and effect in, uh, in situations like that. South Africa is a, a fairly uh, small country by population. It's only about 50 million people. Um, but despite that, something like one out of every six people with HIV in the world lives in South Africa. It's five million or so HIV positive individuals in a country of 50 million people total. Young women of reproductive age are at extremely high risk of HIV in South Africa in particular. Um, in antenatal care clinics, HIV prevalence can be as high as 35% in some regions of South Africa. Um, uh, and in addition, women who have HIV are increasingly becoming pregnant after their HIV diagnoses, in part because antiretroviral therapy availability is widening, uh, certainly throughout South Africa, but throughout Africa in general. So you have large numbers of women becoming HIV positive. You have many of these women initiating antiretroviral therapy and many more in years to come. And then you have very large numbers of those women becoming pregnant. We have almost no information right now on whether those pregnancies affect these women's response to antiretroviral therapy and their HIV disease progression while on antiretroviral therapy. So I work with a, an incredibly dedicated group of clinicians in South Africa who work out of the Tembele 2 clinic. The Tembele 2 clinic is associated with the clinical HIV research unit of the University of the Witwatersrand in Johannesburg, and also with a nonprofit organization called Right to Care. And uh, Professor Ian Sana is in charge of Right to Care and the Clinical HIV Research Unit. He's an incredibly dedicated HIV clinician and researcher in South Africa. And then I work with a number of other uh, professors and, and doctors and researchers as well. Um, Dr. Mari Maskew is one of my chief collaborators there. And uh, Professor Patrick McPhail um, is one of the key research figures there as well. The clinic is one of the single largest clinics in Africa for antiretroviral therapy. The clinic itself sees 13,000 people um, with a, a very small staff of doctors. It's an incredibly intense environment for HIV care provision. Um, and they uh, capture all of their data in electronic medical records. And so um, the doctors and clinicians have been gracious enough to let me work with some of their data that's already being collected for sort of classic clinical reasons, um, but is also analyzable in a, in a research context. It is the second semester epidemiologic methods course in the master's program, the Master's of Science in Global Health program that's now in its second year at the Duke Global Health Institute. So um, the first semester is taught by Dr. Brian Pence, uh, and that's sort of a broad overview of epidemiologic methods. Um, I will be doing what Brian and I like to call a second coat of paint on a number of those methods. I will be doing some in-depth lectures on bias uh, in observational studies and in randomized trials. Uh, some lectures on regression analysis and some subtleties of regression analysis, and then some lectures on how to analyze time to event data, survival curves, rates, Cox proportional hazards models, that, that suite of methods. A little knowledge is a dangerous thing, so it's important to me that students understand how to do some things, but also understand where their abilities to do things are, are limited simply by the fact that we've only had two semesters to teach them thus far. Um, I also hope that students come away with, a, with a, an appreciation for epidemiology and a desire to go take a couple more semesters of it at some point in their lives, because 
you know, it's incredibly fascinating to me anyway. And I hope I can get that across to the students. I'm excited to be here and I'm excited to meet with, um, meet with students about their research interests, especially if those research interests um, sort of can find common ground with my interests in maternal health and infectious diseases in a global context, but really regardless of their interests. Um, and I'm really excited to teach this course in the spring. Uh, it's going to be the first time that I get to both design and teach a course all to myself, um, which is both exciting and terrifying all at once.